Okay, welcome back. So we're going to look at an example here, kind of just classifying all these different types of data from a sample data set. Okay, so our data set here is just, just a cut section of a, a survey that I've taken before. Just kind of a preliminary course survey to collect some data from a class. All right, and we can see we have a bunch of different variables here. I just cut clip 20 random, a random sample of 20 people out of there. Okay, so I'm going to open this up just a little bit bigger. Open it up over here in Excel. Okay, so what we want to be able to do at this point is look at a data set, identify the variables and what, what kind of variable, what, what type of data do we have here, and then we also may want to look at its level of measurement. So let's take let's take this first column here, blood type. All right, blood type O negative, B positive. All right, this type of variable is definitely so the easy thing, probably the easiest thing to do is distinguish between qualitative and quantitative, categorical or numerical. All right, this is definitely a categorical variable. All right, then remember, we can break down categorical into two further levels, and, and that is associated with our levels of measurement. All right, so blood type, we got to think about all these different potential categories, all the different potential values for blood type. Is there some sort of natural order there? All right, so I would argue here that no, not really. So this is a nominal categorical variable. Okay, so let's look at height. Next call. Well, height, that's that's a number, that's numerical. Alright, so I would call this qualitative or you know you might you might want to call it numerical. Okay, so when when we identify something qualitative we also need to identify, well, what kind of qualitative data do we have here? Is it discrete? Is it continuous? Right? Remember a good rule of thumb for distinguishing that. If it's, it's all about countability. Right? So if something is easily countable, I'm going to call it discrete. Right? If something is not so easily countable, if it could take on an uncountably infinite amount of values, right, that would be continuous data. All right, now this sort of variable, now don't be deceived by a variable like this, and don't be deceived by sort of cultural conventions when we report data, right? If I report my height, I'm going to say, okay, I'm, I'm six foot tall. Or here we even have it a little bit more precise, we have it in inches, right? But if I just say I'm six foot tall, right, it doesn't mean I'm exactly six foot tall. All right, I'm probably a little more, a little less, whatever, whatever it might be. This person here, they said they were 67 inches tall. These are just rounded to the nearest inch. All right, what this is, this is a measurement. All right, this person could be anything. They're they're closest to 67 inches because they've rounded. All right, but this is a measurement. This is continuous data. All right, so I can't look at someone. I can't just look at somebody and count how tall they are, how, what their height is, right? That's just something I would have to measure. And if I'm going out and measuring heights, there's an infinite amount of potential heights that I could get out there in the world. The only thing I'm limited by when I'm working with con continuous data is the precision of my measuring instrument and how my data is reported. All right, so let's think about the level of measurement here. Right? Well, we have, it's certainly not nominal or ordinal, right? it's not categorical. So we're working with interval or we're working with ratio. Right? With height, even though there are different conventions for height, you know, such as inches, centimeters, meters, whatever that might be, there is a true zero for the height of something, right? 
So this would be on our ratio level of measurement. So now let's look at our next column. All right, now we're thinking about the number of siblings that someone has. All right, we see some people have no siblings, one sibling, one person here has four. All right, so first type of data here, all right, this is numerical data or qualitative data. I just like to call it qualitative rather than numerical. And so is it continuous or is it discrete? All right, well, in this case, no matter how many siblings I have, right, I could have zero siblings, I could have one sibling, four siblings, a hundred, a thousand, maybe whatever. Right? No ma the point here is however many siblings I had, even though there's not necessarily an upper bound on my variable here, however many siblings I have, right, well, I could count them. Okay, so it is countable. So this one is qualitative and discrete. So again, what's our level of measurement here? Well, there is a true zero value here. So this is a ratio level of measurement as well. Now notice here, this was qualitative and continuous. This was qualitative and discrete. Right? But these were both ratio level. Okay, so that's important. Because remember, level of measurement doesn't necessarily have to do with whether it's, it's continuous or discrete. Okay, let's move to the next column, eye color. All right, this one's easy, categorical, right? When, when something's words, it's pretty obvious it's going to be categorical. Our level of measurement, is it nominal, is it ordinal? All right, there's no real natural order to the number of categories here or to the arrangement of categories. There's no reason if I were to write these out I should list brown before blue or, or green or whatever. All right, so this one nominal as well. All right, our next one. Your year in school. So we got some juniors, some freshmen, sophomore, and so on. All right, again, it's words, categorical. That's easy. But is it nominal or ordinal? Now, if I were to arrange these categories, there is a natural order to it, right? Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Okay, so this has an ordinal level of measurement. My last category here, my last variable here, all right, this, this is an important example. So remember these last few categorical, well, this is easy. That's, that's words, letters. Okay, it's categorical. Words letters, categorical. Here's some numbers. Oh, it must be qualitative. What about this one? Here's some numbers. Okay, these are people's student ID numbers. All right, so that it's important. The re this is the reason I don't love calling qualitative data numerical data. Because that makes people think lots of times that just because something's a number, it's qualitative. All right, well, remember, qualitative data has to be numerical data with some sort of mathematical or arithmetical context. Okay, so like student ID numbers, if I take the the average of all these people's student ID numbers, that's not going to make any sense. That number doesn't mean anything. If I multiply one person's by another, that, that doesn't mean anything. All right, so yes, this is a number, but it doesn't have a mathematical context. It's really just an identifying type number. Okay, so even though this is a number, I would still say this is categorical. Now most of the time when you have an identifying type number, ID number, social security number, wh whatever that might be, right, it's going to be categorical. A, a number on a player's jersey, right? That number, it doesn't tell you any qualities about that person, right? It's just an identifying number. It's not a measurement on a person. It's not a count of something, right? It's just a way to identify somebody, okay? So but usually when I have a number that's categorical, right, numbers do have a natural order. So most of the time, a, a number categorical variable is going to be ordinal. Okay, so I hope that helps sort all of these definitions out. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.